Here at The Season Marketer, we pump out a lot of content between our weekly marketing videos, weekly marketing emails, and now a weekly marketing podcast, not to mention all of the content that we're creating for our clients, social media posts, blog posts, emails. You could say that we eat, sleep, and breathe content. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Even the best of us can get what they call writer's block or creator's block or brain freeze. No, I don't think that one's it. Regardless, that's why in this video, I wanna share with you a behind the scenes look of how I was able to get unstuck in a matter of minutes when I was looking to come up with content for a future YouTube video about ChatGPT that would be geared towards small business owners. Because we all know that there are a million ChatGPT videos out there. And so I wanted mine to stand out a little, be unique, and to be resourceful to small business owners. And I did that by utilizing three free resources. And so I'm going to share with you in this video those three free resources so that you can use them if you're ever feeling uninspired or stuck with your content creation. All right, so quick recap. I knew I wanted to create a future YouTube video on ChatGPT that was geared towards small business owners because that's who our target audience is. But I needed that video to stand out because I don't want it just to be another how to make $10,000 in a month using ChatGPT. That's not useful for our target audience. It had to either answer some of the questions that they were having, some issues they were having, or show them how to apply ChatGPT to create shortcuts in their day-to-day -day business operations or something useful like that. And so the problem I was having is I didn't really find what I was looking for and I couldn't get any ideas started from the information that I saw out there. And in order to really set the video apart, I needed to go in and get a snapshot of what small business owners were saying about ChatGPT or if they even understood or knew how ChatGPT could be applied in their small business. And so that's where I had to go. I had to go straight to the source, to small business owners to see what kind of questions they were asking. And so that way I could apply it to putting that type of information into the video. And for those of you out there that are questioning why I wouldn't just use ChatGPT to help me create information for this video, there's a reason that I didn't, and it's because there is a very limited capability to ChatGPT, which if you wanna find out why or what that is, keep watching to the end of this video because I'm gonna explain it to you. But so now let me share the three actual free resources that I did turn to to get me good, useful, and juicy information that I could use in the content of my future YouTube video. Resource number one, answerthepublic.com. All right, so here I am on answerthepublic.com. This is free. There is an option to upgrade to the pro version. The free version will allow you to do three searches per day, which seems to be enough for me. So just keep that in mind. Now here in the middle, you'll see that's prompting you to use one to two words to search for what you're looking for. Additionally, it's got a drop down box that lets you select the country and then also the language. So I'm going to keep it United States. So I use this search term chat GPT use for business. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to be very hyper focused on small businesses. Notice here to the left, it's telling me that anything that has a dark orange means that it was highly searched. And if it's a very faint orange, it was the lowest search term. So as I scroll down here, it's gonna give me this nice little pie chart. And within that pie chart, they have it divided into segments. And the segments all correlate to the type of questions that people had asked. For example, when, right? This segment right here is gonna tell me they asked chat GPT use for business. What I really love about this tool is that it will present information to you in different formats. So here's another way that it's presenting those questions to me. It looks a little more cleaned up, 
but if we continue on, you'll notice that they will actually list it in alphabetical order. And so this is really great. It's telling me that people are asking chat GPT use cases for businesses. It's asking for, um, let's see here, chat bot use case templates. So that's a great opportunity. These are all ideas that I can incorporate. Resource number two, TikTok. All right, so I've logged into TikTok and right here in the search bar, I'm going to type in chat GPT for small business. And what I'm looking for are videos that have comments so that I can scroll through the comments. So as I search, I find this one right here and it looks like someone's asking about, can you teach us how to integrate chat GPT to chat bots? So there's another one that says, they love seeing businesses using chatbots, so that may be an opportunity to include that information in a future video. If I continue to scroll, I find another video right here, and it looks like this one is going to be asking about If there's any change in listing views using ChatGPT before and after, and then continuing to scroll, um, looks like someone's asking about copyright issues as well. So that may be an opportunity. Resource number three, YouTube. Yes, I turned to YouTube and went to other YouTube videos, but not for the reason that you're thinking. I have consumed a ton of ChatGPT YouTube videos for the sole purpose that I'm curious to see how people are using it, but also because I do think that people should do their due diligence to see what other type of content has already been created because you can find gaps that you can then address. I actually went on to YouTube to look at the comment section. If you are creating a product, if you are thinking about creating a course or creating content, I could tell you that the comment section of YouTube videos that are related to that particular topic is a gold mine. It's gonna give you a ton of ideas because what it will tell you is what somebody didn't address in that particular video. And not just that, but it can also tell you what other opportunities you have to create content that might be spin-offs of that topic. And so let me give you an example. All right, so I logged into YouTube and I typed up here in the search bar, how can I use chat GPT for my business? And these are the videos that popped up. Now, the first one I'm going to look at is this one right here, seven different ways to use chat GPT for your business because it is targeted towards small business owners. And I am going to scroll down to the comment section and look for questions. Uh, this first one right here, we need more examples of chat GPT for, for running business, digital marketing, and so much more. Can't wait. Additionally, we have another comment that says, I was expecting some other use cases of chat GPT as well. For example, product description, social media posts, product categories, description, call to action, Google, Facebook ads, campaign title, description. So it goes on and on. Now here's a really interesting one. Can you please explain how to do SEO using chat GPT? So that could potentially be a topic to include in a future video on chat GPT. Now I'm going to go back to the search results. All right. So I'm going to keep scrolling and I'm going to click on this video right here. It's got 165,000 views and let's see what type of questions they're asking in the comments here. Oh, this one. Hello, Pat. Love your content. What is your recommendation on the use of chat GPT to avoid plagiarism? Is it safe? Would it be a good practice to ask chat GPT itself on a regular basis for the source before taking the information and working with it? Now notice it also has five likes under this comment. So it means that other people were in agreement with it. So that might be a good piece of information to include in a future video about chat GPT. And so now let me explain why I did not use ChatGPT to create information or give me ideas as far as what to include in this future ChatGPT YouTube video. 
The reason is because I want this video to include information that perhaps has not been created or content that's not been created. And chat GPT only gives me a snapshot of what's already out there. And so let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I did turn to chat GPT and I asked it, please provide me with the following, a bullet point list of ideas of information that I should share in a YouTube video about chat GPT that would be useful to small business owners based off of the types of questions small business owners are asking about chat GPT. And as you'll notice, it generated a nice long list for me. Now let's look at some of the information or topics that I included. And so let's look at some of the ideas it did generate. Uh, let's see this one. Benefits of chat GPT for small business owners. Discuss how small business owners can leverage chat GPT to streamline their operations and improve customer experiences. All right, that one's pretty good. I feel like there are tons of videos out there that already do that. Uh, language support and multilingual capabilities. Discuss the multilingual capabilities of chat GPT and how it can assist small businesses in communicating with customers from diverse language backgrounds. All right, that one's pretty good. All right, so what I did is I then prompted it again and asked, did you generate these ideas based off of Google searches, YouTube searches, or any other data? And its response says, as an AI language and model, my responses are generated based on a mixture of licensed data, data created by human trainers, and publicly available data. I have not been directly trained on specific data sources like Google searches or YouTube searches. The ideas I provided in the previous response are general suggestions based on my understanding of the topic as a language model trained on a diverse range of internet text, including websites, books, research papers, and other sources of information. And y'all, this is the one thing that people forget. Yes, chat GPT is a great tool, but it has a limited perspective and it's not going to give you any data that's correlated to Google searches or YouTube searches. And so it just misses a small sliver of, you know, what people are out there asking for. So just keep that in mind if you are trying to use chat GPT to create content. And so what you very well could be doing if you're just copy and pasting straight from chat GPT is just regurgitating content that people have already read or know. And so just remember there's a little asterisk next to ChatGPT if you're using it for content creation. Hey, if you're an SOB, small loan business, then stick around and watch this next video right here. And don't forget that we have over 200 marketing videos in our video library that are ready and queued up for you to watch today. So go check it out.